Now some might say this next introduction is one that you've never heard before. And that would be true. On the drums with us for the last 90 minutes. <laughs> his first show. It is his first show. Give a hand to Ryland Steen. Comes with some real big fish. We're really happy to have Ryland. Thank you. Reel them in. Rookies. Uh, when I first started playing drums, I was um, 13 years old. I, um, a friend of mine. It was interesting because I grew up in a household with music. My dad's a musician, he's a songwriter, guitar player. But every time I would try and pick up the guitar, it was sort of like, I don't know, it was, it was like someone speaking a completely different language and I just, I had no idea how to approach it. So, oddly enough, music wasn't really totally a part of my life. I would listen to the radio and it was fun, but one day I went over to my friend's house who had just got a drum kit and I was just completely enamored with it. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Um, I had no idea how to approach it or play or anything, but I just picked up the sticks and just started banging on it, and I thought this is the coolest thing ever. So that night when I went home, I was somehow able to convince my parents, I need a drum kit, you know, and this is this is the last thing I'll ever want, you know, please buy me a drum kit. And uh, we compromised, and uh, it ended up being a thing where you know I got this weekly allowance for doing chores around the house, and it took me a year to save up. They bought me the drum kit right away, but it took me a year to finally pay it off. But I got this this little like CB 700 kit that really wasn't that good, but you know, to a 13 year old kid who had never played drums before, it was the coolest thing ever. Um, and uh, that's how that's how I got started. It was it was it was it really was life changing. I mean it. I had no idea, you know, as you know, 13 years old, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And I was thinking about that the other day. Where would I be today if I hadn't gone over to my buddy's house and saw that drum kit and saw how cool it was? Um, so uh, I guess I was really lucky that uh, he had that drum kit. So that's because otherwise I wouldn't be here today doing what I'm doing. The next nickname that's still to this day is still sort of st- stuck around. It seems like no matter where I go, which is the rabbit. And um, that just came from. Uh, when I first, I hadn't uh, joined the band uh, Real Big Fish yet, uh, which is a Orange County ska punk band. Um, when I joined up with them, uh, they were really into this movie called Super Troopers, which is a kind of funny movie if uh, if you watch it like 50 times. You know, you can't watch it once or twice. You got to watch it a whole bunch of times, invest a lot of time into it, then it becomes funny. Uh, but the, the, it's, it's a movie about just these highway patrolmen and there's this, the new guy, the rookie, they called him the rabbit and because I was the new guy in, in this band, Real Big Fish, uh, all of a sudden I became the rabbit and somehow it stuck. Even, even after 10 years of playing with the band, I was always the rabbit, you know, and, uh, which, which is funny because it's, it seems like nicknames can become, you know, some, somehow people identify with people's nicknames much more than their name. I would have to say of all the Real Big Fish fans there are out there, more of them, probably 90% of them actually know my name. You know, they they all know me as the rabbit, which, which I guess is kind of cool. You know, it's like, it's like when you have that good friend that everyone calls T-Bone, you know, who who doesn't want a nickname? I started, uh, well, before I started playing with Real Big Fish, uh, I was playing in a band called Square with, uh, it was a trio, sort of a power pop trio, I guess. Um, uh, you know, it was a singer who played uh, piano and synth bass, and, and uh, his name was Sean Bestie. And then the guitar player, uh, his name's, name is uh, James Valentine, who went on and is still to this day playing with Maroon 5. Um, we were just these three young guys from Lincoln, Nebraska that moved out to Southern California because, um, you know, it was almost sort of like a manifest destiny sort of thing. You know, it's like we had, we had to see what was out west, you know, and, and, you know, try and pursue those dreams of, of making it in music. Um, and within the first week of, of living in Southern California, uh, you know, we played this Ernie Ball Battle of the Bands, and Real Big Fish just happened to be on the panel of judges, uh, and they liked our band right away. Uh, we seemed to get along, we exchanged numbers, and within a week, we started hanging around with them, and uh, we opened up a few shows for them. Uh, and so that's sort, sort of where, where it all spawned from, was just really just becoming friends. Um, and throughout the years, uh, I, I would fill in for previous drummers 
uh, if whether they were getting married or had other things to do. So there was that sort of connection there. And, uh, you know, it just goes to show you, you know, it, it seems like with any, any business, but especially the entertainment world, um, if you're friends with somebody, you know, you're, you're more than likely going to end up being able to get a job, you know, whether it's with a band or, or you know, or a film crew or, or you know, or, or just, or whatever, you know, whatever field you're in. But the fact that I was friends with the guys really put me in a good position uh, to play with them later on. And, you know, there was really no audition process. It was just they called me up asked if I wanted to be a part of the group and I, I said yes you know right away and and then for it I mean geez that I mean to this day the band is still on the road playing 200 days a year and and uh, and I did that you know, did it with them for about 10 years and uh, uh, so it's it was it was a long ride of you know playing small little punk rock clubs and you know in, in all you know whether it's all throughout the world you know all it's playing with them all throughout the world, all the way from tiny little cl punk clubs to big festivals where there'd be 50,000 people there. So that was quite a quite an adventure with them. I would have to say the, you know, the th you know, things that inspire me, you know, throughout my life have, have changed and, you know, I feel really strongly about the idea that if, you know, anything in life that you're pursuing, and in my case it's music, it was never from a, a, a perspective of how rich can I get or how much money can I make from it. Um, it was always just what, what sort of positive impact can I have on people. And I love the idea of being able to go play, sh play shows as often as I, as I do and just for a few hours a day be able to make somebody happy. Um, you know, because we all have stresses, we're all, you know, in life, we all have things that we're trying to adversities we're trying to overcome so and know that uh, and know that it could always get worse uh, but you know and, and that's it's weird kind of saying that but like it, you know in a way it's like just sort of appreciating what you have in life and 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 me I just I, I know that there's those moments where you know when you know things are always going to seem hard but but I think one of the the biggest things is just always having perspective and knowing and knowing you know what you're trying to achieve and, and trying to come from a sincere place really started rambling and going on a tangent.